from an early time I can remember getting emotional about singing in a way that still happens to me I find it an emotional experience for all of our languages we can't communicate for all of our native tongues we're all the scars of the past are slow to disappear the cries of the dead are always in our ears only the very safe can talk about wrong and right of those who were forced choose there's some who will choose to fight for all of our languages we can't communicate try and say I'm this kind of a singer or that kind of a singer. I just get totally involved in, in the song. I don't think too much about what way I'm going to accompany it or what way I'm going to sing it. I just really study the song and listen to the words and the nuances and the rhythm and that's just where I'm at. In 1969 I sat on a stage in London with Ewan McCall and Peggy Seeger and the penny dropped a bit that here's a man singing in the traditional style, but he's singing about the issues. And then I heard him singing songs like Dirty Old Town, which at the time was about what was happening to Salford. It's become a different kind of a song now. It's become, it's one of those songs we sing now and we don't know what it's about. But he wrote it as a social commentary on what was happening to his town. Did I tell you about the making up a baby? No. And Bebe said to me, she said, tell me, Christy, where did it all begin? <laughs> I think it was 1943 or 1944 in the majestic ballroom in Tremor. My father asked my mother out for a slow foxtrot, and nine months later I was born into a very musical family. Well, jazz, it was a very musical family. Like, Daddy would get up at three o'clock in the morning, take out the island pipes, and he'd start playing the slow airs and the mazorkas, and then Mammy would come down at seven, BJ, she'd make the porridge, and she'd take out the concertina, and the two of them would play in the beckoned slow airs and the, and the reels all day long, of course, pausing for the odd deck of the rosary. <laughs> and then Bibi says to me, what were your earliest influences, Christy? Oh, Geely. Count John McCormack, Jimmy Dunney, Bobby Rogers, Mick Dell, and Dickie Rock. Percy French, I was heavy into the Percy French song. So. It was at the fair of Ballon Dubber, I met my grad at the jobber, if I could lay my hands upon the rubber, he stole away the pride of it. That kind of stuff, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> Until about 1957, I think, baby, it was, I was heading down the back street and I went into the Palace Cinema. BJ's Bill Haley in the comments. Rock around the clock, baby. I lost me soul to rock and roll. <gasps> Billy Fury. Jane Vincent. The whole feckin' lot of them. I didn't know whether I was coming or going, BJ's. Until one night, baby, I was coming home from devotions. And I was thinking to myself, you know, all this rock and roll, it's outside my everyday experience. Like, there I was, baby, riding out to the bog on my bicycle, singing... Riding along on my automobile, you know. It's all very well for Chuck Berry going down on the back of the limousine with some young one, but I was still trying to get Donald and his sister up on the back of my bike. <laughs> so I was looking for something a little bit more organic, like, a bit more macrobiotic. The jizz as I found it, baby, one night I was twiddling the dials in the old pie. Fuck it, I found it anyway. Fine girl you are. Are you the girl that I adore? And still I live in the hopes to see On a holy ground once more So I started following the Dubliners and the Clancy Brothers and Pecker Dunn and Maggie Barry and a whole lot of them, baby, and I, I became a lounge boy in a ballad lounge. 
tuned again next week, baby. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think? I don't, that, that sounds great. Have I got any hits in my hands here? Ah, oh, yeah, of course you have. You always have a shirt. Will it be very big next year? <laughs> well, that depends on the people, doesn't it? Will we make the Leinster leader? <laughs> Newbridge was a garrison town. The Corrah was the biggest garrison in the island of Ireland. Kildare was a garrison town, and Nace was a garrison town. There was a huge, uh, always a huge British military presence there. This is Moorfield Terrace here, and these houses were built originally by the British Army. But now, this is the only house that's left as a family home. These three are all divided up into offices of different kinds. This is our, our back garden here originally. And that was my bedroom up there. And many of the night I climbed up the wall and went in through the window. And down the back here were the, the sheds for the, um, where the army officers would have kept their, their horses and their livery. And uh, this was our, our shed here. This is Mrs. Daly's, this is Murray's, and Brannigan's, they had two sheds down there. Well, here we are now rambling down the front street in Newbridge. This chemist shop here, uh, part of it used to be an old grocery shop, which my father opened back in the early 50s. It was an old-fashioned kind of a shop, it used to sell loose tea, sugar, Rashers, sausages, eggs, black pudding, white pudding, the whole lot. And this is where I first worked. On Monday, I used to weigh the tea and sugar. On Tuesday, I used to go to the dump. On Thursday and Friday, I was a bit of a messenger boy. I used to eat a lot of biscuits as well and drink a lot of lemonade on the sly. My father's mother people were the Dowlings, and, and they were in Barnstown for, for centuries. And when I grew up, Barnstown was inhabited by my grandmother, a bridey Moore, and by my granduncle, Frank Dowling, and my granddad, Annie Dowling. And the three of them were there, and their whole way of life uh, uh, made a very big impression on me. The thing I remember most about them is that the order from town was the same every week, year in, year out. It was always the same, and I can still almost I'm sure I can still recite it. It was 80 gold flake. There would be 80 gold flake, there was always salt and sugar. And there used to be fish because they get a bit of whitened from town on the Friday. But all the, uh, all the provisions went out in a small box every week. And it was the same every week. They had everything they needed. I would have first came out here when I was about three. Well, I would have, I would have come out here as an infant. But my earliest memories of it would be things like the wireless coming in and, and the batteries being carried in. We used to get the batteries charged up in Newbridge and bring them out. And people coming in to listen to races on the wireless. Other neighbours coming up to listen to, maybe it was the first wireless. I have those kind of memories. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a whole different world then, of course. You know? All this would have been different fields that all had different names. This was a lovely road in. There used to be a duck pond down there. And there was always daffodils. There's a lovely avenue, sweeping avenue coming in here. And then my earliest memory is a thatched cottage here, which subsequently had a, a tin roof on it. But it's amazing now, there's, there's nothing left. It's just gone, it's disappeared. Disappeared off the face of the earth. I mean, if, if the hill of Allen wasn't there, I wouldn't recognise where I'm standing. So I will pluck my love some roses, some wild Irish roses. I will pluck my love some roses, and the fairest that ever grew. And I will place them on the grave Of my own darling true love In that cold and silent graveyard Where she lies beneath the dew
I had a great bit of luck back about 1961, Frank. I went into the, the library down in Newbridge and I got this book called Joyce's Collection of Songs. And in the middle of it, I found this song called The Cora Kildare. And of course, I started singing it. A lot of people around here think I wrote this song, but the song was actually written by Robbie Burns. And straight I will repair to the Cora of Kildare. Yeah. Is that her behind that? Behind the bush. Oh, the winter it is past And the summer's come at last Ah, sure, and you never know the birds, it all right. They are singing uh, yeah. in the trees Oh, their little hearts are glad But mine is very sad True love is far away from me, and it's the red I will repair to the Cora of Gildare. For it's there I'll find tidings of my dear. Upon the briar By the water Run and clear Gives joy To the linnet And the bee Oh their little Hearts are blessed But mine It's not at rest For my true Love is absent from me And it's thread I will repair To the colour of Kildare For it's there I'll find tidings I was in fifth class in national school Brother Brendan was our teacher there was a knock on the door and Father McNally came in and he called Brother Brendan out of the class. And to this day I believe I knew that it was something to do with me because I got this weird feeling. And then Brother Brendan came into the class and called me out. And the two of them spoke to me and they more or less said, you better go home, your mother wants to see you. And I got up on my bike and I cycled up the town and when I got to the top of the town I saw the black crepe on the door and I knew that somebody was dead my memories of him are quite vague but I have memories of, of, of quite a big man with, with black hair and brill cream who used to whistle quite a bit I can remember the way he whistled um, he used to sing his songs were um, I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts and the garden where the praties grow and the pride of Petrovore the girl I loved was beautiful, I'd have you all to know And I met her in the garden where the praties grow She was just the sort of crater boy that nature... Chris was um, 10, 11, and uh, Barry was a year and I had six in between Three sons and three daughters And it was rather difficult in the sense that up to his death I was with him all the time and uh, then when he died, I was left carrying the can, like trying to keep up some kind of communication with them. The biggest thing that was cast upon me when my father died was at the age of 11, I was told that I'd have to look after my mother and brothers and sisters, that I was now the man of the house. And I realise now what a, um, a weight that was. I was able to relate to it because my own, one of my own sons is now 11. And when I realised what it would be like for that to be said to him, it gave me an insight of what it was like for me. I never saw it that way before. Through you ride the finest horse I've ever seen Stand in sixteen one or two With eyes wild and green you ride the horse so well, hands light to the touch 
I could never go with you no matter how I wanted to Right on See you I could never go with you no matter how I wanted to Right on See you I could never go with you no matter how I want to When you ride into the night Without a trace behind Run your claw along my gut One last time I turn to face an empty space where you used to lie And look for the spark That lights the night Through a teardrop in my eye Right on See you I could never go but you No matter how I want to Daddy died, Mammy kind of left home as well. We became very, very good friends. But I wouldn't say it was always that way, you know. I mean, she was trying to keep the ship afloat, and she didn't have much time to be close friends with me. I mean, she used to get up early in the morning and drive to Dublin to the market to get vegetables and fruit. And then she came back down to Newbridge and she ran a shop. And then she was involved in politics and all the library and education and health and I always remember Mrs. Brannigan next door saying that you'll get clean sheets when the elections are over. <laughs> well, I think all my earliest memories of my mother, when I go right back to the earliest things, they are musical. It was the piano. I mean, she loved to play the piano and she loved to sing. She always encouraged, encouraged me to sing. Like from a very early time, I knew songs and I could sing an entire song from before I could do anything else really. Where the boiling water flows gently past their mountain I met a woman down from the yellow furs She closed her eyes and started singing A song about the light that shines and the wonders of the world She sang of the forests on the high, high mountains Pure, clear water and the fresh air we breathe Of the bounty we gain from nature's abundance How the mighty oak tree grows from a little seed She had an everlasting notion the woman from the yellow furs had the never-ending dream As she called out to the stars Growing up in Newbridge, I was never exposed to anybody playing the flute or the fiddle or the pipes or the kind of culture that I subsequently became interested in. I was in my teens before I, I found out about it.
And I heard John Roy Leakes for the first time at a flat hole in Boyle. It was the first time I ever became exposed to big songs, as distinct from little songs like the Jug of Punch or Rosin the Bow. I heard John singing th- songs like Lord Baker, What Put the Blood, The Raggle Taggle Gypsy. This was something new. There's one of them buried beneath the tree at the well below the valley, oh. One of them in the angels feel at the well below the valley, oh. One of them outside the graveyard, one at the well below the valley, oh. Green grows the lily, oh, right among the bushes, oh. If you be a man of noble fame, you'll tell to me what'll happen myself at the well below the valley, oh. Right among the bushes, oh. You'll be seven years a ringing a bell at the well below the valley, oh. Seven years a burning in hell at the well below the valley, oh. I'll be seven years a ringing a bell, but the Lord above me save my soul from burning in hell at the well below the valley, oh. Green grows the lily, oh. I didn't see John Riley as a traveller. I didn't know he was a traveller. The attitude of the Irish people to the travellers is the flashpoint of, in a way, of society in Ireland. The intolerance towards the travellers, how we do them down. I think it's the biggest injustice in the country. My name is Johnny Connors. I am a travelling man. My people have been travelling. Since time it first began With me horse and covered wagon And the family be me side Grazing the long acre I travelled far and wide I met Bridie Mahan, my sweet wife On a fair day in Red Key she was the finest travelling girl that ever wore shawl. We worked the tin around Galway, then on up to Ballinus Law. For a traveller with a horse to sell, it was the place to go. We sold the old linoleum, swapped carpet. For old pine, but as the years passed on, the traveling life got harder all the time. Where have all the halting places gone? All them friendly doors, where we'd haul spring water from the well and sell pepper flowers. Now it's guards, jailers and JCBs To roll big boulders in Temporary dwellings Are prohibited Innocent little travelling children Lost out on them streets Me sons and daughters on the wine 
lying round me feet As they try to dull the hurt and pain The rejection that's imposed Travellers are not wanted here But there's no place left to go My name it is Johnny Connors I am a travelling man I've taken every tin that's been thrown at me Now I'm going to make a stand I've taken everything that's been thrown at me Now I'm going to make a stand Great effort. I did my first gig here in Slattery's in Capel Street, I think probably about 1965. In those days, there used to be about 14 gigs a week in this place. There was seven happened down in the basement and seven happened here. All different kinds of music. Um, about 1968, there was a gig started up here called the Mugs Gig, which used to be run by... Uh, Donald Lunny and Andy Irvin, and I played at that gig a few times, and subsequent to that, there was also a club here called the Traditional Club, which was ran here every Wednesday night for about 20 years, which was a very important club. Uh, Planksty played on this stage here. We played here every Monday night for a, about three months. Uh, we got a lot of our music together in this room. My involvement with uh, the anti-nuclear movement was the biggest step from the point of view of getting involved in, in radicalism in my music. But that was the start of actually becoming involved in writing and of trying to be relevant. Dark cloud rising all through Expert Town. I see a hard rain on Ireland coming down. There'll be no time to shelter. Now let's make a stand On Mally's plan We'll have to ban Or he'll destroy this land He wants four nuclear stations Who knows how many more If we're going to stop them We must defend Carnsaw Some men and women of Ireland It's time to show your hand the lessons of France and the USA should make us understand That the working man is being used again It's the working man that's being used again The baggot, the baggot in The baggot in smells the same as it smelt 25 years ago It looks the same it's full of sin, dirt, and filth, and it's a wonderful, a marvellous place. The shrine of rock and roll. Everybody played here. Oscar Wilde sang here one night, with Bush Shields. Uh, it's great to be back here, I tell you. Uh, I played in this place more than in any other venue in the world, because I played here constantly from about 1970, Three did solo gigs, then I played here with Christy Moore Band, with Jimmy Faulkner, Declan McNeil, as God rest him, Kevin Burke, 
Robbie Brennan. And then in the 80s, I started playing with the Hearts here. And I played every Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday night here for 52 weeks. We did three nights a week for 52 weeks, and it was always full, and it was always great. Moving Hearts were formed on the kind of back of the anti-nuclear road show of the Carnesaw Point festivals, of the blanket protest in the, the H blocks. Uh, and these were things that I was, I was involved in and other members of the band were involved in in varying degrees. I sang a lot about the hunger strikes. The hunger strikes were going on and it would have been very, very difficult for me to stand on the stage every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday night as hunger strikers died in the H-blocks and not to say anything about it. So that was reflected in the work of the band at the time. And obviously this didn't suit some people. Some people would like to live their lives down here in Dublin as if people were not dying in hunger strike in the six counties, as if people were not at war, as if communities were not at war. It's a very slow door, that. Well, here we are. That was Slattery's, and that was the Baggett. And here we are at the Point Depot, down the North Wall, on the banks of the River Liffey, Balliotlia, Dublin, Ireland, Europe, the world. This is an amazing place altogether. I never thought that I would end up singing a few ballads in a place like this. Jesus, it's amazing. But I'm about to start my third run here uh, on Patrick's Night, please God, 17th of March, 1994. Christy at the point. Um, what I love about this place is to come in here and see it like it is now and then see what it can become. And it's always a wonderful feeling to walk out on the stage here. I used to feel very nervous about playing big venues in Dublin. But I remember the first night I walked out on the point here. By the time I got to the middle of the stage, I realised that my audience were happy for me to be here. And then I kind of twigged it, that if it was OK for the audience, it was OK for me. And I really got into it. No matter where I wander, 
I'm still haunted by your name The portrait of your beauty stays the same Standing by the ocean Wondering where you've gone If you'll return again Where is the ring I gave to Nancy Spain On a day in spring When snow starts to melt Streams to flow With the birds I'll sing a song In the while I'll wander Down by Bluebell Grove Where wildflowers grow And I'll hope That lovely Nancy Will return No matter where I wander I'm still haunted By your name The portrait Of your beauty Stays the same Standing by the ocean Wondering where you've gone If you'll return again Oh, where is the ring I gave to Nancy Spain? On St. Valentine's night in 1981, I was playing with Moving Hearts in Thomastown. News came in about the fire in the Stardust in Dublin, a fire in which 48 young people died. And I tried for many years to, to write about it, to express my feelings about the fire. And one night I was watching a program on RTE in which a mother who had lost three children said they never came home. And those simple words just turned the key which allowed me to write the song I had wanted to write for so long. Round the city, the bad news had spread. There's a fire in the stardust, 48 dead. Hundreds of children injured and maimed. Appear as if the song made some very powerful people very, very angry by what it said. Because sometime later I ended up in the High Court in Dublin where I was forbidden by law to sing parts of the song. The days turn to weeks, the weeks turn to years, our laws favour the rich, so it appears. A mother still waits for her kids to come home Injustice breeds anger and that's what was done Let us remember the suffering and pain The survivors and the victims of the fire in our tale The mothers and fathers forever to mourn The 48 children that never came home There was a time in the 70s when um, I started just doing so many benefit gigs that it became pointless and meaningless. I w it was like I was climbing up in every bandwagon. You know, I was giving my, my songs and my music to everybody who asked me, and it became ridiculous. One night, I remember, I travelled up from Kilkenny to do a benefit in Dublin, and nobody turned up, not even the person who'd asked me to do it. I was the only one there. So it was time to take stock. Now, in, in, in 1994, I say no to everything, and I do what I want to do myself. I, I uh, become involved in things that I feel I can, I can get involved in, and that it will mean something. I got this idea that, um, as my contribution to the trip to Mullockmore, that I'd try and write a bit of a song. Maybe we'll go down to Ennis Diamond soon. And yeah, you should. Cause it a little stir. Again, I don't have a tune for it. But I'll try it here anyway. I 
heard an angry voice behind a dry stone wall at a beauty spot on out by Karen. Go on, get back to Dublin. Your blowings don't belong here, with your traps and round the burn, never staying very long here. And the only thing that I could think to say was, Mother Earth's my native place, this is my native shore. And while I'm here, I'll sing a song in praise of Mullochmore. I took a rocky road up Crowpatrick, I took a mossy path up Schlieve Gallion Braes. And I plunged the deep at Brandon Creek, and I lay in a glade beside Dun Maeve. All alone along the Wicklow Way, peace and solitude I found. And when I reached the slopes of Mullock Moor, I, I felt that I was standing on holy ground. Minister, 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 take time out for reflection as you fly by helicopter in pursuit of re-election. An obsession with affairs of state and high-flying legislature leaves little time for a man to share in the miracles of nature. I had a wonderful time growing up in Newbridge. Uh, we got two days off for the coursing every year, so I never actually went to the coursing, but I was very impressed by the fact that we got two days off for it. We also got time off for Punchestown races. And it was a place with a river, a place with the coral, with lots of soldiers and jockeys and trainers. And it was the Irish ropes across the road, which was always a, a very busy and interesting place. There was always things going in and coming out. Then down the road, there was the, the cutlery, the Irish cutlery. And we also had a place called the Irish Last Works. Uh, so there's always these, right throughout the day, there were these factory hooters going that would kind of mark the day every day, as well as the Angelus bells in the two separate churches. Then a bit further down, you had Bordnamona. I mean, it was a busy place. One of the big catchphrases in those days was, you dirty baluba, you know, everybody was a dirty baluba. And um, I can remember the men coming back from the Congo and the, the crack they used to be in the pubs. I can remember a very good friend of mine, the late Billy Quinn, or the Woodner Quinn, coming back from the Congo, and we had a great night out in the strength of it. I first realised I had a problem with drink about 1965, and from 1965 until about five years ago. I tried time and time again to stop drinking. I reached a point where there was no fun whatsoever left in it, you know? You wouldn't even have the odd night of crack. I ended up drinking a lot on my own. I ended up um, drinking secretly. I mean, my last drink was a half pint glass full of uh, sherry and two Valium. And that's nearly five years ago now. Hopefully, I won't have to go down that road again. In 1958, Jesus, I'll never forget it. I came down and everybody in the kitchen was in bits. They were wailing and crying and everything. What's good? Neighbour's dead. Which ones did I? I was delighted. I didn't like them at all. <laughs> but the mother gave me a pound to go down and get a mass said for him. In 1958, Jesus, the Pope would say a mass for ten shillings. <laughs> I'm baiting down the town anyway and have this pound that I'm looking at and I get as far as the bank corner and meet some of the boys that Jesus Christy, where did you get the pound? And I told them where I was going. I said, are oh, you joking? You know you get eight flagons of cider for a pound. So we got the eight flagons of cider in Hugh Neeson's anyway and we betted out to the hill of Allen and Jays and we, we drank the eight flagons of cider and we said the mass ourselves. Yes, I started hallucinating anyway. I wasn't able for it at all. It was... I don't know whether it was the cider or the mushrooms I had for breakfast, but but yes, I was all over the shop. And, and... As I was walking home one evening, I know it takes believing. I met a group of creatures with the strangest looking features. 
the poor old dog and the worm and the weed and the fine old pigeon. Yes, indeed. Then the daddy long legs jumped up sprightly and danced to the reel and the flickered in light. All round we go, heel to the toe. A daddy long legs jumped up sprightly and danced to the reel and the flickered in light. Oh, yeah. On his tin and wispy spindles, he was deft and he was nimble. His eyes were scientific and his dancing was terrific. And the rats and the worms made it in And the nettles in the corner took it in God says I, tonight's the night We'll dance to the reel and the flicker and light Oh, round we go, heel to the toe oh, God says I, tonight's the night We'll dance to the reel and the flicker and light Then the daddy long legs looked at me directly With a gaze that could dissect me And he asked me in a whisper Hey, have you got any sisters? Good God Almighty, says I to him, what sort of a man do you think I am? I've only one and she's not your type. She wouldn't dance a reel in the flicker and light. Oh, round we go, heel to the top. I've only one and she's not your type. She wouldn't dance a reel in the flicker and light. Says he, does she come from another planner? Has she got a bee in her bonnet? Does she do her daily duties? You never know, we might be suited. And the rats and the worms began to laugh Some of them started shuffling off We're gonna have some fun tonight Getting ready for the reel and the flicker and light All oh, round we go, heel to the toe We're gonna have some fun tonight Getting ready for the reel and the flicker and light yeah. I was playing the circuit in England I was playing the, the clubs in England but I was aware of the fact that there was something really good happening over here that I, I, I would love to have been part of. And the main thing of that would have been Sweeney's men and the Emmett Spiceland kind of thing really attracted me. I had the opportunity to come here, to come back from England in 1967 and take this place on. But at those times, I was 22 years old then, and it held no attraction for me, except a kind of a romantic view that I had of it. Then the morning shower, followed by a brisk walk down the end of the lane for the milk and papers. Agus Harnesh, Gudian Kishtin, where the stirabout, steaming steadily, awaits, devouring, and then a few hours in the garden, a practice. All those horrible places so far behind me, but not youth which is slipping, but should be made to last forever with clear bog smells and distant blue hue all around and frequent sounds echoing around the hill of Allen. They say it's only skin deep, but such joys of nature are on the surface to touch, lick and taste, to roll on the grass and chew long stalks and smell the clover and spy on the rabbits and let the calf lick the whitening hand. Who but a fool would leave it behind for a Romilly social club? Saturday night and I got a gig in the Glasgow Folk Centre in Montrose Street number 45 and I wasn't on until about 10 to 12 and I had to do 10 minutes and the man who went on before me sang this song and I've been singing it ever since and tonight I want to sing it for my brother because he's going to America tomorrow this is a song especially for Luca is the color of my true love's hair Her lips are like some roses fair She has the sweetest smile and the gentlest hands And I love the ground whereon she stands I love my love Well she knows I love the ground Where on she goes I wish the day It soon would come When she and I I 
go to the light Mourn and weep Satisfied I never can be I write her a letter Just a few short lines And suffer death A thousand times For black is the color Of my true love's hair Her lips are like Some roses fair She has the sweetest smile And the jazz Hands. And I love the ground Where on she stands Down by the Clyde, yeah, it was one Saturday night in 1968 and it was raining I love singing, I, I love creating a song I love finding a way to sing a song And then I love presenting it to an audience I may have said this before, but I'll say it again. What sustains me in my work is the energy I get from the people who listen to me. That kind of feedback um, causes me to carry on. Uh, I hope that, like people like Ewan McCall, or, uh, th that I can carry on at my work uh, for as long as I'm able to breathe, for, for as long as I'm able to, to bang a guitar and, and sing a song. How is it going there, everybody from Cork, New York, Dundalk, Gortahawk and Glenamaddy? Here we are in the County Clare, and it's a long, long way from here to there. There's the Burren. And the Cliffs of Moor and the Tulla and the Kilfenor and Michael Russell, Dr. Bill, Willie Clancy and Noel Hill, flutes and fiddles everywhere. If it's music you want, you should go to Clare. Oh, Listoon Barnum, Listoon, 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 Listoon Barnum. Sure, everybody needs a break. Climb a mountain or jump in a lake. Some head off to exotic places. Others go to the Galway races. A cousin of mine goes potholing. A cousin of hers loves Joe Dolan. Matty goes to the south of France. And Jim to the dogs and Peter to the dance. Summer comes around each year. We go there and they come here. Some jet off to Frihiliana. But I always go to the Stone Oh, the I always leave of a Thursday night With me tent and me ground sheet rolled up tight I like to hit Listoon In or around Friday afternoon This gives me time to get me gear together I don't need to worry about the weather Ramble in for a pint of stout Because you never know who'd be hanging about There's a Dutchman playing a mandolin a German looking for Lee Mogo Flynn And there's Adam Bono and Gareth Fitzgerald Getting their foot taken for the sun the world Finbar, Charlie and Jim Hand And they're drinking pints to bait the band And they're grand Oh, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it Multitudes, they flock in throngs to hear the music and the songs and motorbikes and high ace vans with bottles, barrels, flagons, cans. Mighty crack. Loads of frolics, pioneers and alcoholics and crack spoke in the FCA and free Nicky Kelly in the IRA and hairy chests and milk white ties and Mickey Dodgers in disguise. McGraths, O'Briens, Pippins, Coxes, massage parlors and horse boxes, or or making tapes, taking breaks and throwing shapes. There's Aurons, Bowrons, Amadons, Arab Sheiks, Hindu Sikhs, Jesus Freaks. This is heaven, this is hell. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs>